Good morning, friends. Welcome back to Astrology Today and Tarot. My name is Mel Rose. This is the Tarot portion and the second half of my daily astrology vlog, which you can check out on my other channel, Astrology Today with Mel Rose. Here, I'll discuss the tarot card that sits on the side of the page. Then I'll do a quick review of the day's aspects before I play another card that may give us something more to think about. So let's get into it. The card that currently sits on the side of the page is the Seven of Wands, and it's there because it represents, in astrology, the last 10 days, or the third decan, of the sun's transit in the land of Leo. Leo is a fire sign, and Wands and Tarot are fire, and fire element symbolism is about spark and drive and enthusiasm, um, you know, uh, feelings that get us started, uh, initiation and motivation, a, a desire to move forward, okay, so a will to act as well. And, uh, you know, often that's in the, in the interest of achieving some goal. And here we have, with the Seven of Wands, a person who has uh, found, you know, achieved a goal, right? They've got a little bit of a higher ground here that they're defending, and now they have to defend it, right? In the last card, we had the Six of Wands, where they kind of throw you a parade and tell you how great you are for what you've achieved. And now come the people who want to knock you off of your prominence, who want to, uh, you know, maybe use your your social, political, or, or monetary capital that you gained from that last achievement uh, to, you know, to reach their own aims, right? So it's a defensive position that we have to be, be in sometimes when we've gained something, we, we, we feel that people come after us and we have to sort of defend the ground that we've gained. Um, and, and if that's where you plan to land, if that was the, the ground that was the goal and you don't, you don't have any higher aspirations, then, you, then, you know, a good defense is going to be a good idea. You might want to get some more earth energy invo involved and start thinking about security, right? But uh, if you are still going to be a wand, if you are still going to be a fiery personality and you have more things to do with your life than this one piece of ground that you're standing on, then, you know, it's time to start calculating how you, how you get from being in defense of this piece of ground to using this piece of ground as a jumping off point for something bigger. And with all of that said... I'm going to shuffle some cards while I remind myself and the cards that the sun is in Leo. And this is just a couple more days. Sun goes into Virgo um, on Monday evening. So uh, Saturday, Sunday, tomorrow will be the last full day. And then Monday will be most of the day in Leo. Uh, reigning supreme in, our, in the days of our lives here, the sun has been bringing a flair for the, for the dramatic and this desire to be known and appreciated and sort of imbuing us, instilling it in us so that we can sort of shine and be appreciated as well. Venus will remain in Leo for a little while longer, bringing that flair for the dramatic into our friendly and romantic spaces. Hopefully, uh, you know, this is in the terms of over the top expressions of love and gratitude for the people that we like, love and can't get enough of. Hopefully we won't send out any, you know, wrong signals that that you know overstate our feelings or our our capacity to uh, be involved the moon in gemini is in gemini all day today and it's a waning crescent moon it's a time for relieving yourself of outdated notions attitudes and learned behaviors okay this includes language that we are aware no longer helps us to connect with others i know that people tend to get backed up into the way we used to say things or you know, the, and, and, and language changes and what people want from language changes. So if you know that what you're, the language you're using is, is keeping people from connecting with you, you might want to be thinking about, uh, you know, a little creative endeavor toward using different language. And, you know, it's also not, not a good time to cling, cling to these ugly and worn out verbal patterns, especially if we can find another way to say what we mean air feeds fire okay and a lack of air will cause the claim the flame to gutter so that let's not allow our passions to overwhelm the intellect okay let's go with what our heart mind is telling us right now because it's like the intellect in the heart right now 
On the moon side today, we had one aspect. It's moon sextile to Venus at four o'clock this morning. And it's really a positive aspect. We uh, feel pretty open to receive attention, affection, help, whatever it is that we might desire. And if we cooperate a little bit, we can have whatever it is that we're looking for. If it's something that you want or need right now, it's okay to ask. You will probably get your needs met. On the, on the, the sun side of the page, early this morning at 2.56, Mars makes ingress to Gemini. And that's really kind of the big news for today. Uh, because Mars is going to be in, in Gemini for seven months. So Mars's transits are usually around 40, 45 days, but this is going to be an extra long transit because Mars is going retrograde on Samhain this year, on Halloween. So, uh, you know, we've got a long ride ahead of us. <laughs> All right. Uh, for one thing, we might find that in terms of our of our focus, our ability to to focus on the task at hand, our ability to focus on you know making sort of one conquest or achievement at a time gets scattered, and we might start you know we might find ourselves wanting to start multiple uh, things at once. We might make some false starts. We might have to make a couple of tries to get things right when Mars is in Gemini, and that can be frustrating because. Uh, you know, Mars and Gemini both feel like getting things done quickly, but we may have to re retrace our steps and that's going to prolong even the simplest things. So uh, that's the case for us until the very end of October when our sense of initiative turns retrograde. Okay, so please take advantage of all this power and purpose that you have on your side right now. Mars and Gemini is a very cooperative vibe. They're both cooperative vibrations as well. But there may be a sense that, you know, things are taking twice as long or twice as much effort to take to to get done as they normally would. And of course, there's there's stuff going on in the ongoing column today. Uh, you know, I want to look at these three trines with you all. This is this is a real like triple blessing at this time um, saying, you know, Venus trying to Jupiter here is about, uh, you know, Venus is about our. Our, our receptive nature, what it is that we like to attract. We, Venus attract the, the Venus part of us attracts for us the things that we like, love, and can't get enough of. Draw, tries to draw them to us, and Jupiter is a giver. So Ju Jupiter, uh, you know, seeks to expand our sense of what we can be doing have. But Jupiter is retrograde right now, so it's sort of putting that expansion vibe on the inside, and literally in here working with Venus to expand our capacity to hold the good things that we see for ourselves, the good things we desire for ourselves. And um, then Mars is trying to Pluto. And you know, with, with the trying with the trying aspect here in all three cases, it's just like you have spirit looking down on you from above, cheering you on, giving you help wherever you, wherever they can. It's a very positive vibe. It's a very harmonious and highly functioning vibe. So whatever you do in that spirit is going to work for you very well. Mars is trying to Pluto here, and this is power and purpose. This is initiative and literally like our fundamental power in life. So, uh, you know, again, working together uh, so that we have this really, uh, this real clarity about what it is that we are moving forward to do, this real uh, strength of a sense of purpose, and then just the strength um, and the ability to will things forward in the direction we would like to have them go. And, you know, we'll see how that that uh, manifests now that Mars is in Gemini. But, you know, for the time being, if you can think of an ending that you'd like to make or a beginning that you'd like to make, something that you want to quit or something you want to start doing, now is the time to put your physical body and your active assertive effort into doing that. It, again, it's really blessed. It's as though angels are flying right alongside you and saying, yes, go get it. And then Mercury is trying to Uranus as well. And, you know, we talked about Uranus a lot lately. Uh, it, it's, it's getting a bad rep at this time because it's been hanging out in Taurus. And Taurus likes to be really well physically resourced, you know, a really stable center from which to function where we have all the stuff that we need and desire uh, in order to create. And, and Mercury... and. I mean, and Uranus has been hanging out there going, yeah, we're going to bring in some changes. We're going to shake up your, your supply chain. Your, the availability of the resources that you, that you want is going to be, you know, just a little bit changing. You're going to have to become a little more flexible is what Uranus is saying. 
And then Mercury goes trying to Uranus at this time and says, yes, and uh, we have this flexibility of mind. We have this flexibility of the imagination where we can um, actually come up with small, smart alternatives. We can come up with these, you know, these wild oddball ideas uh, that uh, that may just work, <laughs> okay, to drive us forward on the positive path that we seek to, to be on. So those trines, one is to grow our capacity to hold good things. One is to reawaken our capacity to create good things or to shake it up. And then one is to give us the initiative and power to transform our own lives in the present and the future. So, uh, you know, don't know what we're waiting for. Mars is sextile to Neptune through tomorrow, which is August 21st. This has been a good opportunity to engage physically in some fantasy play. And I know I've talked about this being a sen uh, talked a lot about this being a sensual or sexy time, but it's really just an opportunity to show up and connect with others in a way where we get to use our imaginations and we like you know, we get to share with other people what we like. Whatever that looks for you, just remember that it's important to protect your physical well-being at this time, okay? So really be careful out there. And then the sun is quincunx to Pluto and opposite to Saturn, okay? This is a little bit of a challenge in our lives at this time. It's like the recesses of our mind have been illuminated, possibly to show us something factual about ourselves that we would rather not recall, okay? There have been times in our lives when we've been irresponsible, where we have, um, you know... Uh, taken take advantage of the weakness of a situation to you know to for our personal gain uh, or you know where we've just done harm to our relationship with somebody uh, you know w you know without really having a good excuse to do so right <laughs> uh, I don't know I don't know if there are any good excuses to go harm to do harm to a relationship with somebody unless you know they're out there breaking the law and then you've got to tell on them right but um or maybe you're the kind of friend who doesn't do that. Maybe you're the kind of friend that buries the body. I don't know. Uh, so, you know, anyway, we all have these things in our lives that we've done to cause harm and to, to bring pain. And, you know, perhaps it's not a lot. We don't like to think of ourselves that way. And we certainly don't want to sit around ruminating about things that we've done in the past that, you know, hurt other people's feelings or harmed other people's uh, chances or opportunities. Um, so, you know, it's a hard thing to ask to, to talk about, but, you know, you, we also can't just tuck it back in the corner and hope that it goes away, right? It's something that has to be addressed. Recall these three trines that we have up here. We are being shown now about our own behavior and how, um, it, about our own behavior and these, these blessings are what's bringing it up, okay? Because, uh, you know, we have this... We have, we're, we're looking to expand our capacity right now to carry all the good things that life has to offer, right? And yet we're carrying around these sort of boulders, these heavy weights that take up space in our hearts and minds, right? They're, they're still sitting there in the back of your mind thinking, but the time I acted like this and I feel so terrible about it, right? This is an opportunity to pull up those past wrongs and to look them over, learn what you can from them, notice that they no longer represent who you are and perhaps they never did, okay? Check to make sure that that awareness is evident in your current life. And then you can place these allegorical boulders out in the allegorical garden where they can catch some sunshine and some rain and just become some ugly old things that you don't carry around anymore, okay? The moon is waning after all, so it's a good time to be releasing old baggage. And Mercury and Quincunx uh, is Quincunx to Saturn. This sh this goes right along with this Sun stuff because uh, you know it in indicates that we have this moment of sober realization, it, and it, it says that we can reckon with the information that we normally find difficult in an intelligent way. So uh, we just have to be intentional about it, right? Use your head, use your flexible brain, okay, to to make that personal reckoning so that you can move forward at this time and we currently five, have five retrogrades on our list this is the season for retrogrades is upon us uranus is stationing now to go retrograde next week mercury will make its third retrograde of the year very soon mars goes retrograde at Samhain, the day we celebrate our descent into the darkest time of year so what does retrograde do it doesn't necessarily turn everything on its head it's not bizarro world but it does give us 
pause to reconsider, reassess, and recreate the ways we interact with and make use of these planetary energies right here. For example, Saturn is our planet for structure and stability. It represents our urge to build something solid according to a plan that works. And normally we go about our lives with, you know, probably some pretty straightforward ideas as to how this is done. But when Saturn is retrograde, we get to reconsider the how of our approach to doing what works to build something that will stand. So we look within, we may find personal habits or ideas that don't contribute very well to our ability to approach these energies. We may find that we have ways of doing things that don't show our commitment to a solid outcome, right? And we therefore have an opportunity to update our behaviors so that they reflect more clearly our commitment and dedication to creating and maintaining structures and networks that actually work to support us and other people. So with all of that said, I'm going to go ahead and turn this card over. I'll put these retrogrades away. We got the King of Swords. Okay. <laughs> Use your head. You have a flexible mind at this time, okay? Uh, you have a mind that can bring about metamorphosis and transformation, okay? You can, you can have a great idea. You can, use your, you can use your great ideas and your flexible, powerful mind at this time um, to reckon with the past and to reckon with those things you feel are limiting you right now. You can use, you can use your mind at this time to, um, you know, to take responsibility, you know, to, to claim accountability for uh, the ways in which you have harmed yourself and harmed others, the ways in which you have limited yourself and limited others. You can... Uh, you can do that reckoning within. You can have those conversations with yourself at this time. And, you know, probably uh, you can find a way to sort of put down some of that weight. And the reason we're trying to put down that weight, again, is because we're trying to grow our capacity, right? We want more from this life. We have a bigger, better, badder idea of what our life um, is going to look like when we feel we have, you know, everything that we need and desire. So, uh, you know, we've got to expand our capacity. We've got to expand our capacity to hold <laughs> what it is that we want. And, and we have to be smart about doing it. Okay, we can't just throw our bodies against, uh, against any of these problems anymore. Okay, we're not using um, just our physical strength and our fire and our passion to get our goals met. It's not just about drive, ambition, um, enthusiasm, excitability, irrepressibility, uh, you know, restlessness, whatever, you know, whatever a fire is, you know, we need the fire to get the things done for sure. Okay. Mars is the fire, is the fire sign or the fire planet. And it's definitely about, uh, you know, taking initiative and, and making conquest. Uh, however, you know, we need to bring a little bit, it's funny, like Mars was the Mars or Aries, depending on, on who, on whether you were Greek or Roman. So I believe it was Aries was the, was the, was the God of war, but really the God of conflict, right? But Athena, Athena was also a God of war, a feminine God of war that sprung from the head of Zeus, fully formed. And, uh, this was not a God of war that was about conflict. It wasn't about a, a a god of war that just, you know, said, you know, let's suit up and, and blunder in and, and see how many people we can kill. This is, uh, Diana was a god of war that was about uh, uh, strategy, about going into war with intelligence, about, uh, you know, trying to, um, you know, only go to battle if you had a plan to win. <laughs> Okay, so now we have the theme of this entire day, right? It's it's we're only going to or we're only going to battle if we have a plan to win. Mars went into Gemini today. We have to have a plan to win. Okay, we can't just be um, defending. We can't just be on the offensive. We can't, it can't just be constant battle, full speed ahead. We're gonna sit back. We're gonna make up our mind about what we can do, what we can hold what it is that we would like to expand into, all right? Um, and, and we're gonna 
we're gonna keep our minds open and we're gonna have good ideas, okay, about uh, handling these problems intellectually. And that's, you know, the problems of what's behind us that's that's sort of haunting us right now, but also the, the problems of like, what is coming up ahead of us? What is that bigger, bad, badder, better future that we're envisioning for ourselves um, that, you know, is is present for us as well as in the future. Right, so, um, plan strategy right we want to make sure that if we're we're if we're going to fight for something we're doing so intelligently right we're 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 handling our problems in an intelligent way we're handling our our personal expansion and our drive forward with power and purpose and a flexible mind I believe that's all I have to say about it today, friends. Thank you so much for joining me. I truly appreciate your presence here. My name is Mel Rose, and I'll see you all back here tomorrow for more Astrology Today and Tarot.